Hey folks, welcome back to the cabin. This week uh, I'm going to be kind of focusing on my solar power. I'm sick of having to come in and um, get all my batteries and stuff all set up for my um, Milwaukee tool lights and stuff that I've been using. I want to have something that's a little bit more permanent. And I'm, I've got enough of the walls and stuff done here to where um, there's no reason that I can't start doing a little bit of finish. And so I've got my buddy Don is up here with me and we're gonna go ahead, you can see Don just wave in the background. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I picked up on eBay a bunch of these 3.12 watt lights. Here's what they look like outside of uh, the packaging. And I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, hey Carl, that's just a reading uh, light. You're not gonna have a whole lot of uh, of light radiating off in the cabin, but you'll be surprised at the power that these things put out. The reason I went with the steel roof and the bright walls and everything is I wanted a lot of light reflection so I could use minimal amount of uh, wattage off my solar bank. And uh, this is what we're installing. I showed you once before on some of the videos how they work. Um, with this light, I do have a control center that I'll show you later on in the video. So make sure you watch a video to the end that's going to run all the lights at one time. Uh, you can turn them on and off individually. You can uh, do all sorts of great things from that control center. And then individually, the reason I chose these particular lights is say if I don't want to turn them off by the control center, for example, if you're up in a loft, you can just simply hit the switch that's on the light itself and you'll be able to control the light. So uh, it just makes sense for me. Thank you for uh, tuning in this week and uh, Let's get rolling on this electrical work. I think this will be a pretty educational one. Um, most of the wiring that I figured out on this video, I went ahead and um, checked out a bunch of different YouTube videos, did a little bit of reading, talked to some electricians. But Cold Beer Ranch has another video that is uh, just incredible. He's got a small cabin like I do and did all the wiring, did all the own his own solar work. And... Um, and his project turned out really great. So thanks Cold Beer Ranch for your, uh, for your video. It was very educational. I have these lights are kind of prepped and ready to go. Don is putting on these little crimp connectors onto the wires that come with the lights. And then uh, in the rough stages, if you watch my rough video, I already have all the DC and AC wiring strung throughout the ceilings and the walls. So this is going to be a finished video where I'm just going to show you me hooking them up, uh, securing them, and then uh, go ahead and testing the system and checking it and make sure that it operates fine. So what I'll, the way that I'll proceed is I'll just cut these at a reasonable length, strip the ends of them, connect them to the uh, connectors, and crimp them, and then I'll go ahead and secure the light in the ceiling. There we go, that one's done. You can see this is a real cheap electrical tool. Um, Don brought with him a little bit better tool. Maybe I'll show you that one later on. But it has the crimping devices are at the end and then the holes for stripping. Let's see if the camera can pick that up. The holes for stripping 
are all marked with the appropriate uh, size wire markings, so on and so forth. So that's how we do it. So this is all done. I'll go ahead and I'll push the excess wire up uh, into the loft and then just uh, I'll secure the, uh, the light. And what I think I'm gonna do is, this might be a mistake, but I can always go back and correct it, is I'm just, when I put these in, I'm gonna have them kind of facing towards the wall. From when I was reading the manual, this can spin, you know, 360 degrees. So I, I'm not too worried about what direction they're facing to begin with, but I wanna keep it uniform. So I'm gonna put the switches to the outside, the exterior walls, and then I'll keep the post going towards the interior walls. Wires are crimped and we're gonna go ahead and install these um, lights now. So if you wanna watch, I'm gonna grab a drill and a couple of screws and we'll go ahead and we'll affix these to the wood backing that I have installed behind the steel roof. Okay, first one's done. You can see the lights on a swivel. I can move it whatever direction I want. And then um, we also have the on off switch right here. And if you want, you can even have the lighting just facing down. That's probably where I'll set it until I go ahead and um, figure out what areas of the cabin we want uh, illuminated. All right. I'm not gonna film me uh, putting the rest of them in, but I'll show you what they all look like when we're done. You know, for interest of time, I don't want this to be real boring. You guys get the idea of how I'm installing them. And then uh, I'll show you how I do the control panel. And I think that'll be a good start to sending you guys off with a little bit of an idea on how I'm, I've opted to light my cabin. Okay, so I have the lights hung in the two lofts, the bedroom, and in the main family room. And um, here's what I'm gonna use to, uh, to connect them. I th hope that shows up decent. This center piece illuminates in uh, bright blue and it'll show you how many volts are on your battery bank. I have a spot here where we can hook up our portable um, electric co uh, cooler and then we have some ports for our charge station where we can charge uh, cell phones, laptop computer, so on and so forth. And then each one of these toggle switches will also illuminate in uh, bright blue color. And um, I'll have one switch. We'll control the lights in the loft um, in the front of the cabin. Then the next switch will be uh, for lights in a family room and this will be in a family room. And then um, this light switch here will control the master bedroom. And then the last switch is gonna control the loft um, upstairs. Now keep in mind, this is all set up like on a two-way system where not only can I control the switches with this one control center, but um, each independent light has its own shutoff uh, switch on it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting these. Um, with this setup, this already has all the fuses uh, connected in the back and all the negatives are looped uh, together and um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use a, a fuse block just for convenience purposes to tie all the negatives back here together and then um, I'll attach this then to the fuse block if that makes sense. So it looks complicated, but it's just like wiring a boat or a car, same type of uh, setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring it.
All right. These two main wires go back to the charge controller and they're gonna be fed into this axis panel by these two main wires. And then I have two different clusters of um, wires that I still have to connect together. I have all the gr uh, ground wires, which I have put ends on it. And then I have all the power wires, which go directly to the panel. Um, and you can see that they're already fused. They have fuses in there. Now I know this is gonna seem a little bit different, but I'm in the North Woods and I don't have any other resources. So to connect all these grounds together, I simply got a fuse block like what you would put in a boat or a car. And I'm gonna use just the negative side, which in this case, all these bars are all negative. I'll tie all these into the negative uh, bars and then tie my main negative going back to the battery into the bottom main lead for the negative wires. All right, I have the control panel mounted to the wall and I put a level on it to make sure that we had it uh, straight. Here's the two wires that come off the control panel. I went ahead and hooked them up to my um, charge controller. And then you can see I have my Renogy battery bank is set up here. Charge controllers all hooked up. The wires are hooked up. So let's go over and we'll walk over to the um, control panel and see if our lights work and see if it was a successful project. So now keep in mind, this isn't how this is all gonna stay. These wires hanging out all over the place. I'm gonna clean it up and then I still have to figure out how to bring the wires in from the uh, solar panels so that everything is clean and we don't have to worry about rodents or or pests or ants or anything getting into the home. Here's the panel. You can see I leveled it off and mounted it. And one good thing that I can see right off the bat is it's showing me the voltage on my battery. So all that's left is to go ahead and turn on the switches. And just for experiment purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all the switches on and we'll make sure that all the lights are working. As I turn the switches on, you can see it getting a little brighter in here and they all light up showing me which uh, lights are on inside the cabin. All right, my first glance into the family room. You can see um, I got the light on in the loft. I'll go ahead and turn that off. I got these two lights on in the family room. And then the other two lights in the family room. And man, they're kicking out a whole bunch of light. Now the bigger, deeper loft, you can see the light is on in there as well. And let's go check out the bedroom. And in the bedroom, you can see we've had success there. The two lights are on as well. I'm so stoked right now. For those of you who might be questioning, um, if solar was really going to be bright enough. See how dark it is outside? And in here, I just got done um, putting the solar in this afternoon. And check how bright the cabin is in here. I couldn't be any more excited. That's the bedroom. <laughs> you can hear I have a little space heater even going on in there. And uh, here's the living room in the loft you can see is lit up. It is really bright in here. And remember, these little lights that I got, these low voltage lights, um, they were just considered um, uh, reading lights for an RV. So don't be afraid to be resourceful. If you're a subscriber, you already know this video is about building a cabin on a budget. And um, let's talk about how much the solar costed. I have two Harbor Freight um, 100 watt kits. The, I got each one of those kits, I think for $154. Um, and that comes with a charge controller. Each kit has four solar panels. Um, and then I got a special joiner that uh, where you can put multiple uh, kits together. I think that was another probably 15 to $25. Um, 
The most expensive part of solar is your battery bank. I've got the Renergy battery and uh, I love it. It's huge. It's um, better than having multiple batteries in my opinion because I don't have to lug around different batteries if I ever have to move it. It's a sealed unit. The battery I think I paid $250 for which I thought was very reasonable. We did buy it off the internet so we got it for a really great deal. I thought it was. So basically for probably right around I think I have a total of with the lights included in the wiring uh, of the house the whole thing is probably right around $700 is what I have invested in here. So that includes my eight lights that I have, the charge controlling station, um, the monitor that's on the wall, the outlet for our, um, our DC cooler that we have that's going to be cooling my food whenever I'm up here. Uh, I've got a charging station for my two charging stations for my cell phone and laptop here in what's going to be like a little kitchenette thing. And then I have an additional two charging stations for my cell phones and last laptops in the master bedroom. So we're pretty well set. Uh, you know, it's not that big of an investment. And from here out, it's great. I have no utility bills. I'm truly going to be off the grid. I don't have to pay anybody for the electric that I'm using here. Uh, I don't have any natural gas or anything like that. Uh, so it's a great alternative. So that wraps up the video for this week. I'd like to thank um, uh, you people for supporting me. I'd love to thank my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is free education, free entertainment that doesn't cost you anything. I was a little bit leery when I first got on YouTube. Uh, what does subscribe mean? It, all it means is every time I put out a video, uh, it's going to notify you that another video has been put out. Talking about notifications, next to the subscribe button is a, a little bell notification button. Hit the bell that has the word all after it. And then anytime I put up any type of video, it'll let you know that a new video is out. And um, yeah, I'd like to thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next week on Carl's Off The Grid. Hey folks, I just wanted to share with you this week, I got a special package in the mail. It's from a, a YouTube channel that I've been following for a couple of years at least. It's called COD Outdoors. And uh, the host Jody has been uh, running this channel for quite some time. And uh, he does a great job of mixing it up. He's into all sorts of really cool stuff he does. Um, everything from uh, metal detecting and checking out uh, old sites where he finds like military pins and he'll put a camera inside his little uh, remote control car and does some cave exploring. Um, does a lot of ancient artifact finding along uh, a river that he uh, frequents. And so it was kind of cool. Uh, he had a little bit of a competition and I ended up winning. And um, this is what he sent me in the mail. So I wanted to share this with you. I'm gonna check out what Jody sent me. He's a pretty uh, resourceful guy. Um, it's always pretty cool to see what he, what he finds in the areas where he camps. He camps a lot by a river and uh, has made a lean-to and everything there. So I'm real honored to be able to receive this present from him. And uh, sweet, he included a pretty cool uh, letter that I appreciate Jody thank you very much and uh, he really went above and beyond on this one um, this is a knife that Jody made and I'll get a close-up of it and then uh, he also included a sheath and uh, yeah this is beautiful this is a knife that I think that I could really use a lot around the place up here, it's perfect. Uh, I don't have a knife that I carry on a regular basis. Jody, you are the man, thank you so much. Beautiful present. And then this is what really uh, what really floors me. Like I was telling you, he, he's, he looks for a lot of different artifacts and things like that. Oh, this is sweet. Jody, you went way too far, brother. He, uh, made me two necklaces 
with some uh, stones that he found that come out of the main creek or the area where he goes ahead and, and finds a lot of artifacts. And Jody, just like to thank you for this. Man, I wasn't expecting this much. I really appreciate your support. And uh, if you guys ever get a chance and you want to go check out his channel, his channel's called COD Outdoors. I'll put a link on the bottom here somewhere or else at least put the name down there so that you guys can check it out. Um, he's a really exciting guy. Uh, he does a lot of stuff uh, that has to do with all the outdoors, obviously, by the title of his name. And lately, one thing that he really does did that's cool is he uh, built his own bike, and uh, he travels a lot and does videos showing about different areas where he's going and different things that he does with his bike. And he stretched it out, customized it, and it looks pretty cool. So, all right, check him out, COD Outdoors. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jody.